Hello, my name is Simon Bingham and this is part of my June for video series. Um, what I want to cover today, it should be a 10 minute video, no more, is load balancing. Okay, so when do we need load balancing? Well, by default, um, in the routing table, what you will see is, say for example, where there's two links to the same des destination and they're the same cost, it won't it won't share across the links. So take for example, 12, router 12 that I have here and router 11. They, it's potentially it's got two links which are the same cost um, and to get to networks that are say here or to get to this guy's loop back it will choose one of one of these links and I believe if I remember correctly with OSPF it, it's, a, it's actually random so um, it does this really because um, it's to be it's to be deterministic so what if we want to you know there might be a situation where these might be two different remote sites we might have a you know, a quite expensive link between these sites and say we're doing backups or something in the middle of the night, we certainly want to use certainly want to use, you know, both the links. So rather than just using one of them. So let's just have have a look at how how well let's just have have a look at how, how the existing how it works at the moment. So here's my router twelve, right? And let we're gonna have a look, quick look at the loop backs. So that's ten one hundred dot zero dot zero dot eleven. So let's do run show route one hundred dot zero dot zero dot zero dot eleven. So you can see here we've got two potential routes available to us going by a dot six and going by a dot eight. There we go, going by there and going by there. So he's saying I can go either way, but I've chosen to go via eighteen. Now if we look, if we do a uh, run show route forwarding table. Now let's just put back to my other slide there a second. So remember how I don't remember you remember or you read any theory on how these devices work, but you in effect have the routing table is really a software table, right? Um, it's what the all software processes produce and compile. It then it then creates a sort of version of that called the forwarding table, well the software forwarding table, and then copies that forwarding table to to the to hard hardware to the PFE. So this is really, to be honest with you, this is your A6 and your chips inside the box, which sit near the ports, and they just get a packet and they don't think about it, right? They just look in the routing table and go or forwarding table and go, right? This is where I send it, bam, like that. So but it's these guys that in effect kind of, this is the routing table which is used to make this table. So if we have a look, at, and if you understand this, it helps you with some of the configuration, because the configuration is fairly simple, but it's just knowing where the different bits are. So if we have a quick look again at my routes, so if we go show route forwarding table uh, destination 100.0.0.0, I think it was, it was 11 I said. So have a quick look, uh, 11, yes it was. So let's do. So let's have a look. So at the moment, in the forwarding table, it agrees with the routing table, right? It's saying, yeah, I, I agree. You know, because the routing table has programmed this table up, right? And and it's copied this information to here, and it's saying, this is where we're gonna, this is where we're gonna put this information, and the next hop, this is the next hop. So, in order to um, to tell this device to load balance, we have to do a couple of things, right? We have to write an export policy. And then we apply it under the routing options. This is what I will struggle to remember. This is where is where you put it. But if you kind of think, if you kind of get it in your head here that you're going, you're telling it, okay, here's my routing options, here's my software bit, and then we're going to export and we're going to influence what it what it does to the to the to the hard the hardware bit, if you like. So what we can do is we can write a policy. Now let's initially just tell it to do everything. So we'll load balance everything that's equal. So you do uh let's do oh this one right set let's do call it load load bow ball shall we? Right, set. Oh, I like to put terms in because it uh, I think we just need a then set term then and it says load balance now this is pretty weird right they have a little strange thing here so the way certainly the, all the, new, the newer boxes in the box I'm on don't do per packet load balancing but it seems that the word per packet is what you use to switch on load balancing even if it's not balancing per packet Flipping confusing if you ask me. It should, it should say something like just load balance. I don't. I don't know. Just just load load balance would be good then. You know, but it's the per packet thing seems to have no no use really. Um, but yeah, the statement you have to use. So what have we written? 
So written a policy statement which just says do it. Okay. So now let's go and go to our routing options. And what we want to do is say set, I think it's set export. forwarding table Simon All right okay so it's forwarding table I should know it's off by heart by now set forwarding table oh, there we go export load balance oh that's it so the config is really simple for this for this um, but it's just one of the things of remembering where the bits are I think it's very easy to discount how important this might be in an exam I, I you know if I was writing an exam I'd put this in and say you know Load balance packet. Right, let's have a look then. So we commit this config. Let's do. Let's have a quick look at our um, routing table again. So, so we still see the routing table looks the same, right? It's still got the same information in. It's got two destinations shown, but only one of them shown as active. It's slightly misleading in a way, but but if we have a look at the forwarding table, got them being lazy here. Right, we can see straight away here. We've got. Um, we've got two entries in now so it's basically gonna it's going to use a flow method to determine um, now let's talk about flows for a minute actually that's what you so it's gonna it's gonna basically randomly um, what's called hash flows down here so what it does is it actually um, let me tell you how this works it's actually quite important to understand this so it does it does a bit of maths basically based on the IP on the port sorry the protocol not the port the IP address, the destination IP address, and the source IP address. Now that's quite important because actually the load balance per packet is usually quite bad news because you in effect jumble up the order of the packets, right? So if you have a server over here, you have another server over here, and let's say we're doing a backup, right? Now all the what the servers have to do in, inside the software and inside the TCP stacks, they have to make sure that the packets are in the right order usually because obviously you you know you're transferring some piece of information. Now if you start chopping and changing packets down here, what happens is the packets can very easily arrive at the at the device at the other end in the wrong order. And what happens is, although you yeah you've increased the network bam, bandwidth here, so let's imagine these are I don't know 200 meg links right, and you've load balanced across them both, and you've made it a 200 meg link. So from a networking guy perspective, hey I, I've increased the, the bandwidth. From an apps guy's perspective, you've made everything worse because you know this server is suddenly having to you know CPUs being pegged or the or, the, or, or you know whatever uh, parts of the software I deal with reordering the packets is too busy doing that to actually you use all this bandwidth so that's why it's actually it is actually a good idea for a flow to use one link so for example you may have a server here one destination or a different um, different IP address here it may randomly use 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 a different link now it is random so you could have two servers here and one server here and you could send in traffic and they could hash what's called hashing to the same link it's basically random it does a sort of XOR function function on some math I'm not going to go into here but if you had a hundred servers here and you had a hundred servers here it's almost certain that it would be very extremely random which link it was going down which would be good news because it would balance it now if you were say doing backups for a server over here and a server over here and it was clever enough to say change the port numbers about a bit so it was using a number of port numbers here and a number of port numbers here with the standard load balancing it would still only go down one link because it only takes into account the IP addresses and the protocol but you can change that so if you want to change the hashing algorithm um, this could be done uh, let's show you how to do that you do it under the um, the forwarding options so we do um, top edit forwarding options set load balance what the options are there <laughs> I don't get any options anyway right set hash key now it's quite important you have to have the layer 3 and the layer 4 in here just putting layer 4 means the layer 3 won't work either so you get set hash key family inet layer 3 
and layer four, and that means it will take into account the port numbers as well. I can't really do much to prove this is working without doing some really clever testing. Um, so we can see here that it's um, well, we still see it's still balancing across two ports, but it's not possible really to see very easily what how how that's going to do that. Um, and then first one final thing, obviously I did all traffic but it would be extremely easy to so you see here I did a policy pro, a policy here saying load balance, load balance all now what we don't necessarily want to load balance all we could just redo it and just do a set policy statement load balance, uh, load bowl loopback So I've created another policy here, look, a completely different policy called um, load balance loop back. And let's just have a look at some of the other networks here quick. So I've got some other networks which probably should be showing the shares. I've got the 192.168.31.24. Let's have a quick look at that then, shall we? Uh, so let's do. Let's just do. Um, And show root forwarding options. Let's set that forwarding table destination. So unsurprisingly, this is still being balanced, balanced right. One nine two one six eight dot. Did I say that was? I said that was thirty one twenty four. Thirty one twenty four. And we see this is being balanced, balanced as well. But when we when we go into the top edit routing options, routing options show, and we use different. We use the other the other policy here because we've still got the load balance all here, right? So if we now go delete forwarding table, set forwarding table, export load load balance loopback R11. Okay. Let's have a quick look, let's have a look at what's happened to R11. Right, let's have a look at what's happening. Now, this was balancing before across both the links, wasn't it? But now it shouldn't be, yeah, because we've specifically said we only want, we only want to load balance traffic going to the loopback address. So if we go back and we choose the loopback, that's balancing. Okay, brilliant, that's the end of this video. I think the key thing here with this is practice. It's dead simple, but... Um, I personally forget where the commands are. I, I, it's not; it's, they don't seem to have a massively natural home. You know, like with a lot of things like routing protocols, it's really obvious where the commands are. But here, I, I don't think that's the case. So.